Thank you. Bonsoir tout le monde. And that's about all the French I had time to learn, so I'll stop there and continue in English if you don't mind. Uh, hopefully Chloe had nice things to say about me. I don't understand everything she said, but... Um, I'm up here tonight to showcase our newest uh, release of Scratch version 6. And the great thing, the most exciting thing for me is it's finally running on a Macintosh. So previous versions of Scratch were great. They ran on PCs, very powerful. But now with the added capabilities that Macs give us, um, it's opening up a whole new world. So working in Los Angeles, um, I'm personally the guy sitting in the seat trying to get files prepped for editorial to get them finished, to, to grade them. And the problem that I'm having is my clients nowadays, they come to me and they say, hey, we don't want to pay for transcoding. We don't want to pay for ingest time. We don't even pay for, for rendering. Okay, that's a computer doing that in the background. It's not really someone sitting there doing it, so why should we pay for that? So what Scratch allows me to do is avoid all those problems. So most formats, you can just pull them right in, start working with them immediately without having to go through the, all those additional steps to get things ready. I can't tell my clients anymore, hey, come back in three days and you can look at all your red files. They want to see it now. So we've gone from a situation where we used to be on set or in the suites preparing dailies. Now that's not the case. Now we're preparing hourlies. Clients want things like that now. So um, I'm just going to step behind here onto the Mac and I'll show you a few things that our system's capable of. It's kind of a, if you think of it as a digital toolkit, it's a good way to think of it. It can take care of your problems on the front end. And it might be that the uh, time code coming out of the camera is incorrect. And if it's, a, say, stereoscopic, your left and right eyes aren't matching. It's best to fix that on the front end to prep all those files that are going to feed down the chain and get that taken care of. Because down the chain, someone might notice that if you haven't fixed it and say, oh, I'll fix it in my way. And someone else says, oh, no, I'll fix it this way. And before you know it, you have all this disparate um, time code information that doesn't match up. So taking care of it on the front end here avoids a whole mess of problems down the line. So with the system, um, running it on a Mac Pro, as you can see, it's, um, if, if you have a, a, a bigger tower like a 12-core, um, 12 gigs of RAM, rocket cards, it, the thing just flies. It's amazing. It's a little bit, um, I'm going to run everything a little bit um, slower in this, but at least you'll see all the interface. And it's, it's nice because this thing's so portable. I take this and my color panels, throw them in a backpack, and I'm on a plane going wherever. Um, and once I've, I've gone through a timeline, I can send that, that metadata to my suites back in LA where I have you know, the, the red rocket cards and everything else, and, and it can really hit it with some firepower. So anyway, this is, um, we run with uh, panels, as I said. We have uh, the Tangent CP200s. These are the uh, Euphonics that Avid just bought, the Artist Colors. These are the ones I personally own, they're great. Um, they're nice and narrow, so they do fit in a backpack and they don't take up much table space. And then there's the Tangent Waves, if any of you guys are familiar with this. So these are great when you're doing a lot of color grading work, because I've done it both with and without, um, without panels. I've worked for a lot of companies. I do Deadliest Catch and Ice Road Truckers and all those great reality shows, and those have to be turned around really quickly. So without panels, it's, it's, a, it's a chore to get that stuff done. Um, so I would recommend if you're going to look at a scratch system, um, perhaps for color grading, you might want to look at color panels as well. OK, so what we have in Scratch is we have a construct. And construct is basically just um, a series of slots that you load footage into. So if I have um, a blank construct here, and I want to load in a bunch of red files, I have, uh, let me see, here's about uh, two hours of red footage here. And it's loaded in as day one. There's three folders in there. And day three has a single folder. So I can tell Scratch to keep that original folder structure by setting this depth here. Okay, and I won't go into what all that is, but just um, be happy that um, I can keep the structure of the files as they were delivered to me. And that way it's a lot easier when the clients come in, they say, oh, on day one we had that one shot, it was like take number five, can you pull that up? And I can do that. So let me go ahead and just load these in. As I said, it's about two hours here, so we'll see how long this takes. It's going to be under a minute, I'll guarantee you that. Almost, you can see the numbers taken by. Okay, 175 shots, I lied. And just a sec, it'll pop up in the timeline, populate here. Come on. I don't think it's been a minute yet, I still have time. There we go. Okay, so what you see is in those folders, I had uh, day one had one, two, three red folders, and day 
two, or day three, I sorry, had a single folder in there. And it's organized them exactly in that uh, format. If I want to, I can just string these things out. Um, either as I'm loading in, I can tell it just string everything out in a single timeline, or I can take what I've already built here, and I can just load these into another construct or another timeline as a string out. Like, uh, no. <laughs> okay. So now it just lays them out in a strung out format. So the nice thing is, as I'm working, I can through and I can color grade these in this method as a string out, and then apply that color grade back to the uh, organized bin structure. So very powerful when you're trying to move through a lot of shots quickly. Once you have the shots in your timeline, right here at the construct level, you can scrub through them. You know, I can kind of just, OK, are these the right shots? Is this the right metadata? So if you need to change things like real ID, or if you need to get in and see what the red camera properties are, all that information is available here from these little thumbnails. Um, to work with them, I will hit play all. So I have um, all these shots are 4K, and this is HD framing. So I've got a setup for this projector as an HD projector. Um, so all these shots I can quickly just take as a unit, and with a couple of clicks, I can scale them all to fit width. So now all my shots are scaled for HD resolution. Okay. Now, um, with this product, I can just do a one, pa one light on these. I can go into my color grading. And even without panels, it's pretty, pretty decent to uh, color grade in here. So I have uh, the ability to select, using my key bat, pad each of these color wheels on the bottom here. And then by just scrubbing across the screen, I can kind of move the colors around. OK? So it's great as a review system to go through and do that. Um, now, if the client wants to make notes, we have that ability as well. We can add notes to these. Like, say, this one has to go out to VFX. Same with this one. <laughs> you want them blue? OK. All right. Tough crowd tonight. We can do blue. <laughs> Your choice of five colors. OK, so these shots now are the ones I want to take out to VFX. Um, and if I need to, I can search through all of my timelines, my different constructs, my whole project, and I can find anything that is blue. So I'll just turn off these other colors, or I can type in the word VFX, and see it pulls up just my blue shots. And then if I close this, I have a new construct called my search, and it's got just those shots. So those can be sent out. Now, the nice thing in Scratch is I can output this stuff. Let me quickly grab one of these. I'm going to put these out at their original 4K resolution. So I just grab the shot and drop it off here. This gets reframed to 4K. Okay? And I can add this. This is going to be uh, DPX. So I'm just going to add this to my process queue and go in there. And then I can set this off. So I can hit Start, and this will process in the background. I'm not going to do it because my poor little Mac might be, <laughs> it might cause it to slow down a little bit. But I'll, I'll do some of this later. But you can send this stuff off in the background and then continue working. So my clients are happy. Their, fires, their files are cooking in the background here. And they bring in some additional files for me to work with. Um, so I have this material that was given to me, and it's compositing. So Scratch can do not only the conforming, the metadata fixing, the color grading, the, the review, and the, the and metadata burn and all that. It can also do compositing, tracking, green screen, um, et cetera. So I have this um, show called uh, Folk Show. It's a kid's show. And there's a shot here. Let me just uh, reset this. So there's a shot. Let me brighten it up so you guys can see it at least. The levels. OK, so now at least you can see it. OK, so what I have is a couple of elements of smoke here that need to be comped in. I grab this, drop it off in my fill, and then I also have a mat that goes along with that. 
Okay, and we'll get that placed on top of the uh, chimney stack here. And then if I zoom in, you'll see the problem is it's occluding the, the chimney. So I need to cut that shape out uh, of the chimney. So we'll go over here to our layers. In Scratch, we call these scaffolds. And we'll create a brand new one. And this one is going to be a cutout. So I'm going to create a new shape that's a free form. So it's bezier, like so. OK, and you see it cuts out the uh, smoke below it. And then we also have softness, so I can ramp the softness up and kind of blend that a little bit better. Okay? This is variable edge softness, so any of these points can be pulled independently of the others or the actual shape itself. Okay? So then the next thing I want to do is take this whole thing and track it. So I'll grab both of these uh, scaffolds and we'll group them together. And then the group is what we're going to track. So making sure I'm at the head of the clip, I go into my tracker. And then we'll just pull this down into a good tracking point. And what DS, or sorry, what uh, Scratch does is it does a pre-track for me. So I've set it for 10 frames. You can set it to whatever you want. And it's showing me that frame by frame, it's going in a pretty straight linear line here. Nothing's shooting off. So it's going to be a good track. It's a good point to uh, track with. And then we'll just track forward. OK, so we'll zoom out a little bit here. And then we'll close the tracker. And then you'll see, sorry, I'm, I'm using my iPad as a mouse pad here. So. Try it that way. There we go. It's good use for an iPad. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I go back here. And now you'll see if I uh, loop this thing, the smoke. Whoop. There we go. So it's going to go through because it's on a MacBook Pro. It's 4K being debared and down front, downsized to HD, plus all this compositing information on top of that. It's going to go through the first time and cache it. If I have a full rig, it's not going to have to do this. Just hit play and it goes. OK, so now you can see it's cached and it's playing back in real time. So while that's playing back, I can decide, OK, well, the, the grade on the, uh, the back plate there is a little washed. So let's go back to our grading tools. And we're going to just pull down the luminance a little bit, and maybe some saturation out of there. A little too dark, sorry. It looks different here than it does up there. OK. So I can pull that down too much. Somewhere in there, and then we'll just color it some. OK. OK, so there's that. And then on top of that, the smoke is looking kind of uh, plain now. It's just white smoke. So with that layer selected, that scaffold selected, we can do the same thing. We can change the grade. Blue? All right. Uh, we don't have blue tonight. <laughs> OK, so there's your blue smoke. On top of that, if you guys are familiar with After Effects or Photoshop, you have all these different blending modes. OK? So instead of just a straight up normal, we can do an overlay, a dodge, burn, whatever, and do some kind of a blending, make it look even weirder. And we also have opacity. So we can take that down. All this can be animated on the fly. Um, besides that, as we're working with the smoke, we may decide that perhaps um, the scaling is, uh, is not working for us. So we can take this scaling point, we can pull that down, and then we can just change the scale on x or y. Pull this apart. Oops. And get this little point here. There we go. Too much. OK. So you can see you can go quite far with this. As it's playing back, you can be adjusting transparency, blend mode, color grading, um, the placement, the scale, all the rest of it. And so, um, this is the way to work now. I mean, I've worked the other way where you have to stop and render, watch later what you cooked. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been sitting in, in the bay after you know, uh, a six-hour render, and then I look at it, and I'm like, oh. I forgot to flip the switch to make it full res. And now I've got to render it all over again. You know? So anyway, this saves a lot of that headache. Um, we can also do uh, keying in Scratch. So if I have green screen material, it's just as easy to work with that. So let me go to the next shot here. And oh, I already did it. <laughs> let me kill these guys. 
Okay, so I'll just do this one because we're running low on time. But um, create a scaffold, throw the witch in as a texture, and then I have qualifiers that allow me to chroma key. Exactly. There's the word I was looking for. Desaturate the spill, shrink the mat, adjust the gain. And then she's on her own separate layer, so of course she can be graded. Oops. She can be graded separate from the back plate. Okay, so we handle compositing, tracking, keying. Then on the back end, when you're ready to output this stuff, um, say these are all ready to go back to editorial now, and uh, maybe there's additional VFX work needs done on these, and I need to go to a tool set like Nuke or something else that has uh, maybe additional paint tools I might not have then I can go into my output tool and I can send these files out. So if I select the output node, I can add in additional nodes. So this one can be for an NTSC, uh, NTSC uh, ProRes, QuickTime ProRes. And then I can add additional nodes and they can all stream off one another like so. Once you build these trees, you can save them as templates. So let me kill this one. I might have the same client coming in all the time. They also have the same deliverables. So I can load in pre-built trees, okay? Very easy to use Scratch. When you're outputting also, you'll notice down here, it tells you what you're gonna be outputting. So you can go in here, and as you're changing, I wanna output the slot numbers and the name and the time code. It'll show you in the naming here what it's gonna be outputting before you do it. So it's not a trial and error process. You see what the template's gonna do. Besides that, <laughs> what you really need the iPad for, or an iPhone, or any kind of smartphone, or a web browser, I can take all these, um, this whole project and I can send it out in, a, in an HTML format. So if I go out of my output into my commands, I can export this entire project. Export. And let's see, we need to put it... So I'm going to build, I pre-built some H.264 files already, so that's the one thing you need to do. Make H.264s that then can be played back over the internet. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is change this to HTML. And we'll just call it something simple. Okay, and then if I open up, I'll just do it here on my uh, web browser. This is Scratch site, by the way. If you need more information about Scratch, you want to get a, a demo version of the software, you can contact us through this. And uh, it's assimilateinc.com. But uh, we're going to go to, let's see, localhost one, there it is. So, what Scratch does is it's built all my constructs, and I can choose, for instance, the, uh, the one we were just working in, edit the clip, it'll open up a little QuickTime movie. Give me a second here, there we go. Okay, so there's my little quick time, and then if I need to, I can change my notes, like this is approved, and type in, you know, whatever that might be, publish that, and then when I go back to Scratch, it'll light up green saying something's changed. When I hit update, this shot will be put in there with a new note. So, pretty cool. Thank you. Um, so, we only have a couple of seconds left, and let's see. If you guys are hip on the new camera formats, last thing I'll show you is just a little bit of HDR, because we're just about in the last final seconds here. So here's HDR mode. We will also work with uh, epic footage, which is 5K. And the nice thing about this stuff, it's something we've just started working with, but, or actually since version uh, 5 something. What you have is you have two different um, versions of a shot. So you have uh, an A track and an X track. And if you look at them, one's blown out. It's protected for the shadows. And then the other track is protected for um, the highlights, okay? So with Scratch, we can blend these together, these 5K files in real time. We can work with Epic files, and they can be blended together, and you have the best of both worlds. You have a really high dynamic range to work with, along with um, super clean tracking information, because one, one of the shots will be super clean, no blurring, and then the other has a regular motion blur on it. 
and blend the two together, pull your keys, your tracks, and, and away you go. So I want to thank you guys for, for sitting through this demo. It went faster than I thought. I had a lot to show you guys, and I, I had fun showing it. So I appreciate you spending your time with me. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.